Whee, do I have a doozy for you today. All right, so here sits a 2009 F-150. This is my neighbor's, and it has been a roller coaster of a ride. So it has, or had, the uh, known ABS issue where the module wires broke loose inside, and it was like a B1342 code. Module wasn't communicating. That's all you got. Couldn't talk to it. Wouldn't work. Right. Pulled the module out and sent it to a repair place. The repair place completely botches it. Now the module is toast. So I'm assuming there may be one or two other people out there in this world that end up with this problem. So hopefully all this legwork can help you out. So what I have learned, I did not know at the time, but I do now, is that the 09 Ford is specific to 2009. Now, if you look online, they'll tell you that like up to 2015 works in some places. I bought a module off of eBay after a whole bunch of other problems, right? That module on eBay listed my part number as a compatible part number. Well, the module came out of a 2010 truck. I get it installed, I get it programmed, right? I use uh, Ford FDRS or IDS or whatever you wanna call it uh, to program it. Programming takes, all of a sudden, boom, the old module was masking some problems. Wheel speed sensor on the front right, steering angle sensor not working get those swapped out those codes are gone all of a sudden i go driving i'm no lights everybody's happy boom brake light comes on what's the code no communication to vacuum sensor right turns out if you clear that out off the initial start which is how i had done it right there is no code present for that it won't it won't check until you turn the key on it's the only time it checks so every time you turn the key on it throws this code turns the brake light on so this puppy will not pass inspection um and what i come to find is that the vacuum sensor that it's looking for is this bad boy right here this goes on your brake booster right there you'll notice on this truck there is no sensor there that is why 2009 is special and 2009 only can take a 2009 module it does not have this vacuum sensor well, I cannot find a 2009 module. Uh, the eBay listing said they will take it back, or take returns on this module they sent for 30 days. But if I send it back, we're back to square one. There is no module. Um, they are available for like $1,300 if you would like to order one that way. Um, we're trying to save some money here. So, what I've come up with is we are going to turn this 2009 into a 2010 system. I went to a local junkyard with a wrecked 2010 where the harness was already messed up on the, uh, the battery side over here. So this was all tore up. Um, so they let me get this, didn't really care. So I have the vacuum sensor, which just presses in. It's a press in fitting, just like that one. So we'll pull that one out and we will put this vacuum sensor into that booster because the boosters are the same. The hole is the same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our soldering station at Clayton's. I've pre-measured out my wire. We are going to wire this vacuum sensor into the ABS plug. So I will pick up over at Clayton's. I will go over this diagram with you, show you what I figured out, what we found. Um, the only module that uses this vacuum sensor information is the ABS module. It doesn't relay it anywhere. It's only checking to make sure that you have a vacuum for your brake booster so you don't go to hit your brakes and they're stiff as a rock and you don't have any boost there. So if we put this in, that will satisfy everything and it will work accordingly. Um, so yeah, let me get, get over to the soldering station and we'll pick up from there. I'll show you how to do it. All right, so we have made it over to the Clayton House soldering station. So you'll see here, this is a little setup. This is where we build our AC gizmos, do any other sort of circuit building that needs to be done. So you'll see I have a plug laying here that's cut. I snatched this at the junkyard while I got the vacuum sensor here, just so I could disassemble it on the bench uh, to learn how the plug comes apart. So that way I didn't have to do it in the truck where it's much more difficult to get to. So when you get to your plug, right, this will be clicked in like that, right? This back part with the cam, let me set you over here. This back part with the cam, these wires are all bent over, just like that. This comes down. These cams slide into these holes. Doo, 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 doo. And it hooks down with these two legs. You have a leg here and a, and a matching one on the other side. It actually hooks down into this case 
like that, and then it's pressed in. So, and this end will be taped. So you'll, what you'll need to do in order to pin this out if you're trying to do this, you know, what I've done. So you unwrap the tape here so your wires are free, right? Take you a small pick or a flathead screwdriver. You're gonna depress this tab and push up. And once you do, this will slide out. Oh, sorry, I did it on the wrong side. So you have this tab here. So you press this tab, right, and press up, and this will flip up and come out just like that. Once you get to this point, you don't need to mess with any of the stuff on the back side. So what you do is you come up to the front side here. You'll see there's these little square cutouts on both sides where you can access a little slot on this white face piece. This is what actually retains the pins into the harness. So what you'll do is you'll take a little flathead screwdriver. You'll go into this little slot right here in the side like that and just push it forward. See how that clicked forward? We'll do the same thing on the other side. Bam. And there we go. The whole thing is pushed forward and free. That's not the final step, but that's getting close. So, once you're here, let me see if I can get this camera. If you look into this crack right here, right, let me get a little poker. These little legs go down into every terminal, and that's actually what retains them. So you'll need something very flat and small. I have this de-pinning set, this little pet. I'll put a link in the description and up in the video for this as well. But you need to slide this in on top of the pin and then pry up while you apply pressure on the rear here. And that will actually pull out the pin. So let's do one real quick. So you shove this in, apply pressure, and just go until you get it free. Am in the red hole? Sorry, dude. Well. Uh, not shit. I'm trying to get one pin out real quick on camera. Nice. Before I deep in the rest of what I need. One eternity later. All right, for whatever reason, after my trial errors, this last time was a lot more difficult, but you basically just need to go in with a pin or a small pick and go on the top side and get underneath a little tab right there and it will pull out the back or if you pop this entire white plate out, this is what retains it from the front side. So you can actually, because you're gonna need a spare plug like this because we're adding wires, not removing them. You can push them out from the front, which is how I just pulled the last one I needed. So these are the three wires to make the sensor work here, right? To go into the new plug, right? You just need to make sure that you orientate this the correct way uh, for where the locking tab is, and you can just press it straight through the back of the black right here. So it can just go straight in right there. You just push it all the way until it clicks and then put your retainer clip back in once they're all in position. All right, here we are. I'm in the truck, I'm pulling it out to the shop, but I just wanted to show you. So if you look here, you'll see the ABS light is not on, but the brake light is. That is the code. And it also will say check brake system down here. And hey, look, the camera refresh rate is faster than the refresh rate of the, the lights. Um, but yeah, so that is from that vacuum sensor. So we're gonna pull back to the shop and then I'm gonna get in here and get to putting this harness in. Oh, holy guacamole. All right, so here we are. I got that, took the tire off just to give myself some more room and we pulled the wheel liner over there. So if you're on the driver's side here, right? Pull the wheel liner, the ABS connector is right here. So you just pull that arm up, wiggle it off. So this is where we need to pin our three new wires into, but check this out. Wow, they got some stuff packed in there. So I'm gonna clean that out before I put the wheel liner back in, because that will be nice. Um, but yeah, we basically wanna go, we're gonna pin our three wires into their correct locations, put this plug back together, and then I'm gonna run my wires up this harness, up this harness here to right here, then we'll jump underneath, put conduit on it, and run our plug up over here where it goes to the vacuum sensor. I think I may have made my wires way too long. I kind of eyeballed it, but if that's the case, we'll just curl them and zip tie them so that it's all soldered together already. It'll be no problem at all. I can honestly plug it all together and then hide the slack down here. Nobody will ever even see it. We'll just fold it up and put it right there. But uh, for now, let me get this 
uh, conduit off of this and then I'm gonna start breaking this plug apart and getting ready to pin it all right I just wanted to show this real quick so I'm getting ready to put my pin outs in I got one more that I need to open up so remember earlier I was showing you how it has these little let me see what I can see here if we can focus in those little black blockers on the pins that aren't used so we got to break those out originally I was thinking we were gonna have to pull this backing off carefully slide it down and then punch them out because they'd fall inside but I found this cool piece of steel stick I think it may be TIG welding wire from the welding bench back there but it works perfectly so I've got two of them punched out I have one more to do it is pin number 28 so let me locate that one real quick pin 25 so this is pin one so pin 25 is the green one so 26 27 28 so it's gonna be three over from the all green wire or the green with the red stripe wire so back here so if I go down it is this bottom big one one two three so let me see if I can get this camera set over here so you can see how I'm doing this but essentially I'm looking for this is 25 26 27 28 so if I go in and down I can get my wire back to that back blocking plate and just push it through just like that and knock it out the back side so I don't have to disassemble anything back there so now all three of our slots are open ah. I'm going to go grab our harness we need to add and we're gonna insert our pins all right I'm down to my final pin out so I figured I'd record this one so one of the things you want to be adamant about is making sure you understand which way the clips go because it flips over uh, if you flip the plug over so like essentially this side has the shallow pin so when I say shallow pin I mean like when you look at this pin you see how it has this little notch cut out of the back that's down here by my finger that little notch that drops down and falls back that's where the pin locks it in so on this plug that faces outward so where my thumb goes on that direction and outwards on the bottom side which is where we're pinning so uh, I'm down to my final one which is going to be pin location number two which is directly next to this white cable that is this gray and yellow wire so how did I have this set up a good moment ago I was using that plug as the base to hold my plug so it is so simple to pin these out once you busted the holes out right so this is our final one I need to make sure that my little notch faces the upward direction you don't have to pull the backing plate you don't have to do anything just shove it in there once it goes all the way you'll feel a little click and bam there's our pin and I've added the other ones so we were all good to go there so once we've got that pinned now we get to put our little locking plate back in the front which is the final step whoa, 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 whoa. come on there we go bam so that is all good there now let's route our wires over here with the rest of the wires I'm gonna get my electrical tape and tape it over here like this right now let's get a little base tape going so I just want to blend these in with this wires this part of our harness is going to run with the factory harness up until up here so then what I'm going to do from this point is once I get out of the conduit I'm just going to toss it up there and just plug it in for uh, proof of concept before I put it in conduit and run it up the, the rest of the way but I'm pretty dang confident in this whole ordeal so and if you're watching this video that means it's it's gonna work potentially I mean I, I'll probably still put it up even if it doesn't work so y'all can watch my failures but okay so we got our two leg pieces oh nope two leg pieces are in down there click click boom now let's get our electrical tape taping up here Good thing I super soldered the solder joints because they are right in that groove but I soldered 
I got a lot of solder on there, man. Those joints are super strong. Ah, okay. So there's that. So now I'm going to plug this back into the ABS module and fish this up here real quick. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I have tons of overkill on my wire length. I just want a little proof of concept. Oops, sorry, I'm throwing the camera all around. So I'm just going to fish it right up here. Oh, I got tons of overkill on the wire length. Well, I'm going to put our vacuum sensor in right there. We'll plug this in and then we'll go key the truck up and see if that brake light goes off. Well, here I am. I'm sitting here in the office and I realized I forgot to show the pin out and the diagrams. So I will have those in the link in the description shared some sort of way. Uh, God forbid you're in the same situation. You're trying to follow along. The uh, diagrams will be in the description, but otherwise here's the results. Okay, here we go. I got the vacuum sensor in, plugged in, replugged in the ABS module. Uh, if you happen to be in the poor position of following along with this video to do this yourself, make sure whenever you go to pull that vacuum fitting that you come in here and press the brakes until you run out of vacuum or you're gonna have a really hard time getting that fitting out. Let's see what happens though. Moment of freaking truth, ain't it? Bam! Green eggs and ham! Come on. So there you have it. I'm gonna clean my wires up, get that wheel liner back in, put the wheel back on. This puppy's finally done, but uh, yeah, hopefully you're watching this for entertainment value and not for doing the same thing, but it is doable. You can use a 2010 and after ABS module in a no nine. <laughs> All right, if you can't tell, I'm ecstatic about this. This was not an easy ordeal. This has been weeks in the making, figuring out how to make this all work. But I'm about to go on the first test drive. Make sure it doesn't do anything wonky, but in theory, it should not. If this video is live and posted, that means it is working perfectly to plan. 